Today I'm going to show how in less than 12 minutes we can go from no seismic data in a project to having a gridded and contoured surface that we can then do further interpretation on. This includes tying a seismic line to the synthetic data and then going ahead and tying all the seismic lines to that one using our automatic mistie analysis. We can start by selecting the data loader from the seismic menu on SizeWare's main launcher. We can select 2D or 3D data and today we're going to be doing about 65 2D lines. We can actually load them all at once, provided that they have all the same keyword locations. So here we can navigate to one of the folders, under 2D Seismic there, grab a handful of them, and then we can navigate to another one of the folders and grab a lot more Seismic lines. And we can load these all at once. Next we can read the binary header and decide if there's anything we need to override that might have been entered in incorrectly. So we can change the data format, start time, we can also change the vertical units if we need to if we're loading depth data. The seismic lines come from a number of different vintages as well as processors. So we're going to normalize the amplitude values to 1000 RMS just to give us a similar amplitude when we're viewing on the base map. Next we're going to take a look at our headers, mainly the trace header. Here we can set our different keyword values. We're going to start off with the shot sequence number, or shot points. This one's scaled up by a factor of 10, so we can scale it back down so that it increments properly when it's in sizeware. Next we're going to switch over to viewing IEEE float values. This way we can define our coordinate X and coordinate Y, even though they're in a different format in the trace header. Once we've done that, we can actually switch back to 32-bit integer. We could take a look at IBM float if we wanted, but now we're going to finally define the CDP values. Once we've done that, we can save all of these as a keyword file that Sizeware is going to use to load all of our different seismic lines. After we've saved our keywords, we can set a start and end time to load, as well as default display type, version, and description. Here you can see the default display type is filled in, but we can set them individually if we want. Same thing with line name or start and end trace. And finally, we can set polygon clipping if we need to restrict the area. We can also do a coordinate conversion on the fly when loading data in. And here we go, bringing it all in. While that's running, I'm going to go over what we just covered. So in Sizeware, we have the ability to load lots of 2D lines all at the same time. I don't have to worry about lines being in different folders or in different places. It's really easy and straightforward to just grab them all and load them all in in one step. We have some flexibility with our shot point inputs. So I was able to scale mine, but we can also edit them in case they're not incrementing properly. We can normalize amplitudes on load so that I don't have to worry about that after and get nice amplitude maps once I'm done. We can also edit missing or bad header information if things other than the shot points are missing or just not good. And we have the ability to convert coordinate systems on the fly while loading in the data. So that makes it really easy just to convert from one coordinate system to another. And then finally, all our data is stored in SegY format so it's really easy to grab after the fact if we need to. All right, now that our data is loaded, let's take a look at it. So first thing I'm going to do is zoom in on the area, so up by these wells. And then what I'm going to do is just open up a saved arb line from a text file. And I'm opening up a bunch of intersections from the 2D lines and we'll be able to take a look and see how well they each tie to each other. So we can scroll across, some of them tie all right, some of them have some gain or phase differences, or maybe some shifts. But to start off, what we'll do is generate a synthetic tie for our Caladan North Well. So first thing I'm going to do is select a sonic curve, and I'm just using an Ormsby wavelet, and I can just drop it in there. If I need to, I can shift it up or down and then close my Generate Synthetic window. So now to get a little bit of a quantitative idea of how well my synthetic ties to my seismic, I can open up my mistie analysis tool. 
This will allow me to go through a number of iterations to see what the computer thinks is going to work best for the tie. So it looks like it's quite a substantial phase difference. And what I'm going to do is process out a new version of the line that has the phase and static differences. I can also just visually apply that to the window by clicking apply to main. Now we can see my synthetic is reasonably tied to my seismic and vice versa. If I want to, I can take a look at other intersections between the 2D lines and tie them together and process out new versions as seen here. But that could get really tedious and could be quite a bit of work, especially if I had to do it for every intersection for all 65 lines that have loaded in. So instead what I'll do is head over into Automatic Mistie Analysis. I can select Automatic Mistie Analysis from the Seismic menu on the main launcher. Here I can select an existing run or I can create a new one just by entering in a name and if I want I can enter in a description. Once I've done that, I can select a start and end time that will be used for the mistie, so I'm going to change that. And then I can select which lines I want to use for the mistie run. I can also select a reference line. Here I'm going to just select the two lines that I've manually done the mistie on. And I'm going to see a chart of predicted phase and static shifts, as well as gains. And then I can run through the calculation, and Sizebar is going to go through and calculate to see which intersections and which shifts will be the best. So I can see some intersections have lower confidence values. For the most part, they're better. And I can choose to include or disclude any intersections I want. I can also take a look at raw or corrected intersections. And then once I'm ready and happy with my result, I can apply them and process out new versions of all of those seismic lines. Just so you don't have to watch that processing the whole time, I'm going to talk about some of the advantages in Sizeware when dealing with 2D data. First off, you can display using trace or map scale, so this allows us to see really good relative differences between our seismic lines. We have a lot of flexible display options, changing colors, scales, wiggles, interpolated density. We have really easy synthetic tying, as you may have noticed. We also have a really easy to use interactive mistie analysis tool. And then finally, the automatic mistie analysis is a really quick and effective way of tying a whole bunch of 2D lines all together at once. Now that we've created new versions of our seismic lines that tie together based on our mistie analysis results, I'm going to open up a base map and just open them up again so we can get a visual representation of how well they tie together. And on the base map, instead of opening up a previously saved arb line, I'm just going to show you how easy it is to open up a bunch of intersections on 2D lines by just manually selecting them. And I'll just finish it off with a right click, and it's going to open up my seismic viewer, showing all of those segments again. What we're going to see now is the new versions, which I made our working set. And I can scroll through. Some of the lines are tying together quite a bit better now, actually most of them in fact. Some of them still might have some problems that we could manually fix up later. The automatic mistie wasn't able to correct everything perfectly. But since we have a decent tie with most of the lines, what I'll be able to do now is start picking a horizon. And I'm going to start with the Cadna Aoi formation on the shallower part of the section. It's a really good regional marker. So I can just use our auto pick to propagate it by left clicking and right clicking on our 2D seismic. And then I'm also going to pick a marker below the Tulachi, actually, that displays as a strong trough. And I'll just left click and right click that one as well. And I'll just set them as two different colors to differentiate them. And once I've done that, I can scroll across my 2D line again and see how they've propagated. It's pretty good from a really quick first pass. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to display it on the base map. There's my CAD Naui. And it's only picked on a couple 2Ds right now, so if I want to propagate it across everything, 
instead of opening up every single 2D line and just manually picking them, I'm going to use our 2D auto picker to propagate it all through my data set. And I'm going to select all my 2D lines and I'm also going to select that initial one as a reference line. Now with the 2D auto picker, there's a number of options we can select in terms of search gate, search mode, um, and correlation coefficients. I'm just going to use the defaults right now and I'm auto picking the Cadna Alley first, letting that run. And then I'm also going to auto pick the Tulachi formation. And when I select the Tulachi, as you may notice, the output horizon automatically fills in, as well as the event type and what I had initially picked the first horizon with. So the search mode and search gate fill in as well. Now that I've propagated that horizon across my 2D data, I can take a look and see how good of a job the 2D auto picker did on my seismic. I'll start off taking a look at the Cadna Alley formation. It's not perfect, there might be a couple lines that don't tie together. But if I look at the Tulachi, I got quite a bit better pick out of it. Now I can select Quick Grid and Contour, and this is going to generate a grid and contour based on a set of parameters I've set up previously. And so I just drag out a box over the area, and it will generate. The gridding and contouring will finish in just a couple seconds, and we'll have gone from a data set without any seismic data in it to having two interpreted horizons and a gridded and contoured surface that actually looks pretty good for a first pass. And we've done all that in Sizeware in less than 12 minutes. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in more information, just go to sizeware.com.